Hello Internet Nerds, my name is Solo and welcome back for another video. In today's video we're going to do another comic discussion on the Secret Empire event because we had issue 0 drop today as well as issue 16 of Steve Rogers' Captain America. And these two issues, they basically go together, it's one, it's like a part 1, part 2 kind of thing. So I figured I'd do one big video on both and do a recap interview. Uh, so, in previous issues, we did see uh, Maria Hill was arrested due to her involvement with Pleasant Hill, Civil War II, and she was kicked out of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Steve Rogers took her place. Uh, during that time, Taskmaker and Black Ant had found some evidence. Uh, more or less, they basically figured out what was going on with Steve Rogers. They figured out that he was in Hydra, and they wanted to tell someone in S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, but since Maria Hill was gone, they decided, well, she probably wants her job back, and we can also use this to our advantage. Uh, with the two of them wanting to clear their records, and they wanted to basically just ruin Steve Rogers, they figure let's go to Maria Hill. So this issue picks up with her being basically hunted down by Hydra agents because she again was arrested and she broke out of prison. Uh, so she's being hunted down and due to recent events with Madam Hydra, Taskmaker and Black Ant never showed up to discuss what was at hand. So she finds out where uh, the hideout for those two were and she ends up breaking in and getting into the computer of Taskmaker. And in the process, she was able to find what it was that those two had to tell her. And she found out that Steve Rogers is Hydra. He is the big commander of Hydra. And all along, he's been manipulating everybody and going behind the scenes and doing things and doing really shady stuff to just end up with his end goal. He wants to basically have global domination. So, like I said, she was being chased and hunted down by Hydra agents. And once she finds this out, she has one phone call that she wants to make. And that's going to be to Rick Jones. And she decides to call him because he's the one man that she thinks that can use this information for good. He can use this information to basically show everyone, hey, this is what Steve Rogers is really doing. He has some big scheme up. We need to stop him. We need to come together and figure out what to do. And ironically, at the exact same time that Maria Hill is talking to him and telling him what's going on, he gets a call from Steve Rogers. And Steve is basically calling to tell him because Steve knows what Maria is planning to do. He calls and he tells Rick Jones not to believe whatever she says, that she is trying to bash me. She is trying to hurt my reputation. She wants her job back. She is a global terrorist right now due to what she had been doing with Pleasant Hill and such. And no matter what, she's wrong. Believe me, I'm Captain America. I'm right. You know it. And ultimately, Rick Jones does comply and decides, you know what, Steve, you're right. I'm not going to believe her. You are Captain America. You're the one I'm going to trust. So in the process of him saying to Steve that he believes in what he's doing and he believes that Steve is telling the truth, uh, he also does send over to Steve some codes. And these are the codes that Steve needs to basically take down the shield that has been put around the Earth to protect from the upcoming Chitauri invasion. With these codes, he, like I said, will be able to deactivate it and kind of use it to his own goal. He can use it to whatever he needs since he's fit. And skipping ahead now, there is a small recap, I believe, to the newest issue of Thunderbolts. And now that Steve has these codes, he only has one goal left. He has to get the Cosmic Cube. And recently, in previous events, the Cosmic Cube was turned into a sentient child called Kobik. And with it being a child and all, having kind of a weird emotional spectrum to it, the child needs to be happy. It needs to be feeling like it's doing the right thing. It wants to do what a child wants. It has kind of an ignorance, and it wants to basically just be good. It wants to be nice. It wants to do what it thinks is right. And with it being like that, it needs to almost be manipulated to be able to do its job or to function. And Zemo and the others don't really want that. They want to just be able to use it for what it is. It's a weapon, the Cosmic Cube. They don't want to have to play games. They don't want to be running around chasing their tails, acting like parents with a child. They just want to be able to use this as a weapon for what ultimately is their big endgame. So, with that recap to Thunderbolts, Zemo does go after the Thunderbolts, and in the process, he does two things. He kidnaps Bucky Barnes, and he basically destroys the Cosmic Cube, turning it into eight little fragments, and they do say that they collected seven, and towards the end of this comic, they also do get the last eighth piece. So now with the codes, with the Cosmic Cube, and with basically all of Hydra now brought together with new leaders, Steve Rogers' plan is now able to go into full motion. He's got all the pieces put into play. He has everything he needs. So now regarding Bucky Barnes. Bucky Barnes was kidnapped by Zemo, and Zemo has him now strapped to a missile, and that is supposed to be more or less kind of a... Uh, reminder to what he did to his father. Zemo's father was killed during the World War II era of time, and he was killed by Bucky. Bucky basically strapped him to a missile, and the missile went off and exploded and killed his father, so this is kind of payback in a way. And in the process, he also wants his final moments alive to basically be ruined by his, all the lies he's been told. He shows him proof of Steve being a member of Hydra, and he doesn't believe it at first, but he slowly starts to believe it, tells him to shut off the recording he's showing him, and now he ends up going off with a bang, literally, and in the process, he gets to 
see all of his memories, all of his uh, thoughts of his friend just tarnished. He's now not the man he thought he was. And that is supposed to kind of be a moral thing. It's supposed to ruin him, break him, and have a send-off where he supposedly dies. And in the process, his memories of his friend have been tarnished. And it's not just Bucky that that's going to affect. When everybody else finds out what's going on, it's going to be huge. Everyone in the Marvel Universe is going to feel the wrath of Steve Rogers because the one man that the world has always had faith and trust in is now a member of HYDRA. So ultimately, issue 16 of Captain America was basically the final bit of uh, knots to tie together this big bow of events. It was the last uh, last thing needed to show, hey, this is exactly what we've wanted. We got everything that we needed. All the puzzle pieces are put into play. It is time to officially start the Secret Empire event. Now, issue zero of Secret Empire does start off with all the heroes trying to get ready for the Chitauri invasion. Uh, but prior to that, they do have a little glimpse uh, at where the space of operations is, where all the power comes from for this shield that's protecting the planet, and a Hydra member that has a bomb strapped to his chest goes in there and decides to blow it up. The shield now is completely inactive, it does not work, the Earth is vulnerable to the Chitauri invasion. So, what they do is they send a bunch of people, such as the Guardians, Carol Danvers, as well as Hyperion and such, all the heavy hitters up into space, to start taking on these Chitari because there are trillions of them coming down from space. When they defeat them all, more keep coming. Uh, and in the process, they do now have Tony Stark and Riri Williams trying to fix the shield, trying to figure out why it went off, trying to just repair it so they, the power comes back on so these heroes can more or less survive. Because in this process, they do have a lot of them becoming injured, a lot of them actually almost appearing to die. Uh, even heavy hitters like Hyperion are are just completely biting the dust. They are useless almost to the number of Chitauri that are attacking. So while all this is happening in space, we do have the Avengers on the ground and the Defenders, the Champions, all of the, the heroes that really can't do anything up in space. They're down there on the ground. Uh, and at the same time in New York, we do have a bunch of the villains that were trapped in Pleasant Hill and just other villains that have been, you know, out and about uh, attacking the ground level and attacking all these Avengers and heroes. Uh, and in the process, they're kind of blurting out all the things that S.H.I.E.L.D.'s been lying about to the public and saying, this is why you're going to die because of what these people did, you were collateral damage, but in the process, we want the world to know what happened to us, that our rights were taken away, that S.H.I.E.L.D. has done terrible things for the people they're trying to protect. So more or less, this is to hurt the reputation of S.H.I.E.L.D. and also the superhero community, make people doubt them even more than they already have since Civil War II when all the heroes were fighting each other. So while Riri Williams and Tony are trying to figure out how to fix this shield, the base team is more or less getting their butts kicked. They're going into Captain America telling him that we need reinforcements, that this is not working out, we are going to lose. And they do end up actually getting that shield back up and running. And once the shield is back up, it does come back up at 100%, and you keep seeing all over the world different glimpses from like London and such, uh, that the Chitauri members are just running straight into the shield, and in doing so, it's basically ex making them explode. And it's almost like fireworks is happening all over the world, and everybody is rooting now for their heroes. They're saying, hey, we finally seem to have the upper hand, it seems like we are going to win. But when it finally seems that the heroes are having the upper hand, uh, there was a helicarrier that recently went missing because in Sokovia there were uh, threats of nuclear attacks from the Red Skull, so... S.H.I.E.L.D. had sent some other members over there in a helicarrier, and they lost communications with it. They couldn't see it, they did not know where it went, so they sent more backup. So in the process of trying to find it, they actually do, and this helicarrier decides to crash right into the helicarrier that has Sharon Carter on it and Steve Rogers. So once that ship makes contact with theirs, they end up having a bunch of Hydra troops that are on one decide to start swarming the other, and they do have a member with them, I forget what his name was, but he starts to use his brainwashing powers, forcing them to more or less turn down and not attack. And once they finally reach the head where Steve Rogers and Sharon are, they end up screaming Hail Hydra due to the fact that Steve more or less you know, tells them, I am the figure that was speaking to you earlier that could not show his face. I am the leader of Hydra. And Sharon is right there to hear it all and they kidnap her and decide to throw her into a cell and Steve makes them promise that they are not going to hurt Sharon. And she cannot believe what she's hearing. She, she is now seeing that you know Captain America, the man she loves, is now betrayed them. And she thinks that right now he's being brainwashed, that something is going on in his head that is not right. But he confesses to her that no, this is how everything was meant to be. This is my life. This is me. I am completely in control, and right now I am doing what I believe is necessary for Hydra. So while all this is happening, they did get that shield up and running. The shield is now destroying all of the Chitauri members that are running towards Earth. But in doing so, now these heroes that are up there in space fighting the good fight are now stuck. Steve will not let them back to Earth. So from a strategic standpoint, he said all the people that could hurt him, that could destroy his plan, turn everything that he's done into nothing, are now stuck in space. And now they cannot get back to Earth, and they're also slowly 
slowly being destroyed because there are more Chitauri coming. They said that there are trillions coming. No matter what they do, there will still be more. So we have that kind of epidemic going on in space. Back on Earth, now we're back in New York City, and all the defenders and champions and Avengers, all those people that are fighting all those villains from Pleasant Hill, are now starting to realize that they are in a predicament of their own because of a character called Blackout. I believe he was one of the prisoners that was also in Pleasant Hill. That was the last time I personally remember seeing him. And he is using his powers now to basically trap all the heroes into a Dark Force dimension. So now they're all secluded in one spot. All the other heroes are up in space. And really all that's left is Tony Stark and Riri Williams. So now that they realize that something is going on, there has to be a reason for the shield being taken down and then put back up so easily, and everything just feels like it's not working out right, they end up doing a distress call to all the heroes that are left, all the heroes that aren't stuck in some place, and they're saying to them, we all need to go to Washington, D.C., because there are now helicarriers full of Hydra agents right over the White House. And now this is the first big step into them having global domination, or at least in the U.S. They did have some shots from in London and such, but... Right now, it's all centered in the United States, but Steve has mentioned that he wants global domination. So, for right now, they're all trying to attack the White House. All the Avengers, all the people that are left need to get to the White House. And that's really it for issue number zero. Uh, so, more or less, this big event, like I said, these were two issues, uh, two different comics that collided together because they're both by Nick Spencer. They're both for the same event. And I honestly loved it. This event has been in the making for a year, year and a half now, and they've really, really never stopped this train from moving. Yes, I will admit, if you were someone that wanted to pick up this event and you don't read Captain in America, Steve Rogers, Sam Wilson, and even some of the tie-ins, you're going to be completely lost. I mean, they do show some flashbacks, like I said, for the Thunderbolts, uh, but more or less, if you haven't been reading what's going on or caught up, you have almost no idea what's going on, which is kind of a good thing in a way, because it's really showing to the fans that have, you know, have been reading Captain America and been following these stories over the past year, year and a half, like, this is the build-up and climax of everything we've wanted to see, and it actually shows that they care about the story this time, they care about building up these characters, building up the story and not having it be some little thing like Civil War II, where it just kind of appeared, all these, uh, uh, characters just kind of started fighting each other all for you know the power of one guy that could see the future and it, it's nice to see that they actually care about the storytelling this time around and then back to the Bucky Barnes thing I don't know if they're going to keep Bucky dead and he is too big of a character I feel like to keep dead more or less they're going to probably say he escaped and uh, just dropped himself into the ocean and that's why he was able to survive the blast um, but one character that I did not see in this and I saw people talking about it online is you didn't see Sam Wilson because recently he did put down the shield and say I'm done being Captain America and to me it's like I said in my last video that I feel like Sam Wilson is going to be the de facto hero in this he is going to see what's going on and he is going to create almost like a, a regime to attack and go against Steve Rogers once he gets control because from previous cover images and such and the fact that this is only issue zero it's obvious to me that they do get control of the White House that they do get control of everything that they've been wanting and Steve's plan does work uh, but it's only going to get him so far because uh, since they're going to try to change reality and such I'm not sure if I feel I don't feel like they're going to be able to change reality I feel like that they're going to attempt it but they're ultimately going to be stopped because that's going to happen towards the end of the event again some more speculation this isn't proven yet because we only have issue zero but I do believe that Sam Wilson is going to be the biggest character in this story besides Steve Rogers uh, because most of the characters right now they're all trapped they're all in space they're all in that dark dimension and there's really not much, there's not, there's not many people left that can actually do anything. And yes, you, they did show characters like the champions are still available, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, people like that. But ultimately, you didn't see uh, Captain America Sam Wilson. So it, with the fact that we didn't see Sam, to me, like I said, really seems like he is going to be the one to have to take down Steve. And from a storytelling point, I feel like that is going to be great. Uh, seeing both Captain Americas, pretty much uh, old and new, duking it out, trying to figure out what to do. That's going to be great. And again, I don't know how this is going to end. I do kind of want a send-off for Steve Rogers. They can bring him back later on, you know, or if let's say that this kind of changes everything and it's a rebirth kind of effect uh, like DC recently did, that's okay for me too. I just really want to see how they defeat Steve Rogers because right now Steve Rogers is proving himself to be one of the best villains that Marvel's worked on in the past couple years because a lot of the time, like I said in my previous video, it's a lot of hero versus hero, not really villains, not really anything that stands out. And if they do have villains, it's going to be in a story contained in just a one comic that maybe runs three, four, sometimes even five issues. Uh, so seeing someone like Steve Rogers who is affecting everything he has worked on and every character that has ever existed in the Marvel Universe, that is big. That is on a whole new level that hasn't happened in a while. So I am very excited for this event. This comic and uh, the Captain America comic that came out today, they were they were really good. They were completely like, I'd, I'd give them probably both combined 
uh, 9 out of 10. This event has made me almost kind of trust Marvel again. Again, it's only issue 0, so we don't really know what's to come. So I'm going to be very cautious still, but I feel like this is going to be something. It's going to be a game changer. I feel like this will really, really show us, you know, hey, risks with characters are good and that we can ultimately have a good story with a hero turned villain that can end up making one of the best storylines Marvel's made in the past couple years. Uh, so if you guys have any comments, comment down below and let me know what you think. Have, have you picked up Captain America Steve Rogers? Are you caught up on it? Did you read issue zero of Secret Empire? What did you think? Uh, again, I don't think a lot of people are going to think like I do. I think they're going to be pretty pissed still because Steve is evil or they're just not interested because it's a Marvel event. But I promise you this event is worth it so far. I don't know how many issues it's probably going to be. It's probably going to be more like eight, nine, ten issues. I'm okay with that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. This one was a lot of fun to make. It was a lot of fun to just sit here and talk about this huge epic proportion event happening in Marvel. Uh, so I will catch you guys in the next video. My name is Solo and I am signing out. Peace.